In the introduction to his anthology of film articles, Our Films, Their Films, Satyajit Ray writes, I knew immediately that if I ever made Pathair Panchali, and the idea had been at the back of my mind for some time, I would make it in the same way, like bicycle thieves, using natural locations and unknown actors. All through my stay in London, the lessons of bicycle thieves and neorealist cinema stayed with me. On the way back, I drafted out my first treatment of Pathair Panchali. Bicycle thieves and Pathair Panchali tell their own stories, but what is interesting is that they share some stylistic features and themes. In other words, a neorealist treatment. Both films favor natural locations and unknown non-professional actors, a strike contrast to the Hollywood conventions of the time of shooting in sanitized studio sets with big film stars. Lamberto Maggiorani, who plays Antonio, was a factory worker when director Vittorio De Sica convinced him to play the lead. The majority of the characters in the film, including Maria and Bruno, are portrayed by non-professional actors. Similarly, Subir Banerjee, who plays Appu, Karuna Banerjee, who plays Appu's mother, and the villagers, who worked on smaller roles, had no prior experience of acting. The casting choice was again a bold one, since India's most popular films of the time relied on star power. The decision to shoot in natural locations with unknown actors was a result of circumstances, more than being an aesthetic choice. Italy was feeling the heat of World War II, and its major film studios were unable to function at the time. Filmmakers, hence, rallied onto the streets to tell stories. Satyajit Ray, being a first-timer, could have barely gathered enough funds to shoot a grand, ambitious story. He had to do it with the minimum of financial backing. Apart from the inclination for visual authenticity, other major factors for the use of real locations with an unknown cast in both these films were perhaps the unavailability of studio space and lack of huge funds. Bicycle Thieves has a straightforward plot. A working-class family is trying hard to battle poverty and desperation during the tough economic conditions in Italy post-World War II. Antonio, along with his son Bruno, must quickly track his stolen bicycle, otherwise he'll lose his newly found job. The rest of the film revolves around a hunt for the bicycle, which leads the father-son duo to a police station, a church, a brothel and an astrologer. Pathair Panchali portrays the struggles of an impoverished family, residing in a battered ancestral house in rural Bengal. Harihar is a priest who secretly possesses dreams of a successful career as a playwright. His wife Sarbajaya is charged with taking care of the two kids, apart from managing the house, with a minimum of resources. The film provides an authentic account of the Roy household, majorly through the eyes of the two kids, Durga and Apu. Both films comprise loose episodic structures instead of strict, hard storylines. There's not much drama. Simplicity is the focal point. There are no unmotivated, inorganic twists and turns. The films explored the plight of the working class and the poor. The emphasis is on ordinary people. Bicycle Thieves and Pathair Panchali both reserve empathetic POVs for their characters. The films never judge their acts of stealing, be it Antonio attempting to steal a bicycle at the end, the old woman Indir stealing food from the kitchen, Durga stealing fruits of a neighbor's orchard, and nicking a necklace from a friend. The films do not make simplistic moral judgments. Of course, the theme of poverty is a common thread. The Ricci family, like most others around them, is struggling to keep themselves afloat. Post-war Italy is still in ruins and is facing an economic crisis. Antonio is constantly on the lookout for a job of any kind. The oldest son, who's barely eight, does his bit, working at a gas station every single day. Similarly, we see the Roy family living off of minimum supplies as they strive to get out of the debts that keep piling over them. Unable to earn living in the village, Harihar heads alone to the city. Sarbajaya works extremely hard to run the household, enduring loneliness and regular societal jibes for not bringing up her kids well. Poverty causes Sarbajaya 
to treat the old woman as more of a burden. She cannot stand the responsibility of another family member since there are limited funds. Durga and Appu grow without any comfort, disconnected from the world. The only element that provides respite is the setting, nature. It functions as an amusement park for the kids, away from the hardships at home. The beauty of the village is juxtaposed with the paleness of poverty.